right, well, I'm just going to ask you to introduce yourself, say your name and age, and kind of take us through what happened um, in your sudden cardiac arrest story. Okay. Uh, my name is Susan Copen, and I'm currently 48 years old, but I suffered sudden cardiac arrest when I was 39, and I live in the city of Pittsburgh, and I was training for the Pittsburgh Half Marathon. And I decided it would be a really fun Sunday morning to go on a run with a couple of my girlfriends. And it was November 20th, 2011. It was a beautiful, beautiful November day, which we really don't get that, very, that often in Pittsburgh. Um, and so we went out for just a short little run. It was only gonna be three miles and it was right near my house. And about two miles into that run, I put my, I stopped, I put my hands on my knees and then I fell backwards onto the sidewalk and my friends ran up to me and asked me if I was okay. And at that point they knew something was very wrong because I wasn't responding and I started turning blue and they realized I wasn't breathing. Um, so they flagged down uh, passing cars for help. And at that very moment, two medical students from the University of Pittsburgh were driving by and they hopped out of their car and gave me immediate CPR. And then another gentleman walking by to go get coffee noticed um, who I was and he, he knew my husband and he called 911 and then he called my neighbor to have her tell my husband and then my husband ran to the scene. Um, firefighters arrived in about four minutes and they used um, an AED to shock my heart back into rhythm and then I was taken to Shadyside Hospital which is about a mile away and um, spent uh, two weeks um, there and started out in the ICU on a ventilator and um, they had put me into the cooling treatment where they chill your body. Basically, they put you on ice to try to save your brain and all your organs. Um, and then they slowly warm you back up. So I was there for two weeks, released, and then faced with, you know, what happened and lots of questions and also that I needed open heart surgery. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, it just shocks me because I know whenever I went through this, I used to go on, a run, on runs alone. So I think just the fact of having your friends there, that's, and having those two people pass by that just knew CPR and knew how to perform it. I feel like sudden cardiac grass is not something that you want to go through, but you made it on the other side for a reason. Um, I know that you said that you were on a run, so mm -hmm. I probably like you probably didn't feel anything, but if you did, was there any signs that hinted to it that morning, feeling like a little shortness of breath or anything like that? I just felt a little off. I don't remember anything from the incident. So the only thing I know are things that people have told me. So during the run, my best friend Beth had said to me, you don't look very good. Are you okay? Do you want to stop? And I said, no, I'm going to power through. Let's keep going. And right before I suffered my cardiac arrest, she said that I sprinted really fast past her and, and my other friend, Gabby, and then stopped, put my hands on my knees and almost laid myself down on the ground. So I didn't violently fall or anything like that. Um, so that day, the really, really the only thing that um, I can report is that my friend told me that I didn't look so good, but in the months leading up to my cardiac arrest, um, I had complained to one of my doctors about coughing uh, a lot and coughing specifically when I was working out. And he said it was exercise induced asthma and gave me an inhaler. Um, I had had a stress test a month before my cardiac arrest uh, because I knew I had a heart valve uh, issue. I had mitral valve prolapse which I got monitored on a regular basis. So I had had a stress test done and I was told, you know, you're going to have to get that valve repaired one day when you're, you know, an old lady. Um, and the two weeks before my cardiac arrest, I had uh, a really bad cold, um, almost like a bronchitis. And I'd had a fever and a cough and was really dehydrated. Um, so the day of the run was the first day that I had felt 
really good and felt like uh, I can go out and um, exercise today, I, I feel good. Uh, so there were a lot of things leading up to my cardiac arrest. Wow, um, I didn't know that you had a pre-existing heart condition. I remember reading your story, but I, I think I almost just missed it. Um, yeah, and, and they're not even 100% sure that that had anything to do with um, my cardiac arrest. My heart surgeon says it, it did. Other doctors said maybe not. We're not quite sure what caused the cardiac arrest. But um, I will say this, that the, um, the mitral valve um, prolapse that I had, uh, it was uh, a little bit of leakage. And then towards the end, um, it was a lot of um, regurgitation. And that's where the coughing was coming from. The, the constant clearing my throat and constant coughing was the blood flowing the wrong way. Um, you know, but the getting a stress test done a month before this happened, you know, I was kind of given the green light to go ahead and run and uh, train for the marathon. And so um, I wasn't really thinking much of it. Yeah, I think a lot of the people that I've talked to, it's like a common trend that some people have had heart issues, but they were always right on top of it because I mean, it's heart issues, something that like you always need to take care of. Um, and it was the same way for me. I had multiple stress tests, got cleared, all of that. Um, and you just never expect it. So out of all of this, this very challenging process, what was the most complicated or I guess, like the hardest part of everything that you went through? I mean, because I don't remember anything and um, I describe it as just like a light switch going off. Like one day I was there and boom, I was gone. Um, and I didn't feel anything. So it was actually very peaceful uh, and painless. And um, there was no, people ask me all the time, were you, were you scared? Were you, you know, what did you feel right before? And, you know, I didn't know anything happened. Um, so the hardest part was um, knowing what it did to my friends and my family um, and how traumatic it is for them. Um, for me, you know, I survived. So for me, it was this joyous occasion. Uh, but for everybody else around me, uh, it was very, very traumatic. Yeah, that kind of leads me on to the second question, which was how did it affect those people around you? I know my mom and my sister, they got a little bit of PTSD. Yeah, I, um, I thought it was harder on my family than it was on me. Um, I bounced back very quickly. And the day after I was released from the hospital, I went to the gym to walk on the treadmill. Um, and then I immediately started training again for the half marathon. Um, it took me a while and took me a year to get back there and to get back into uh, to shape to do that. But, um, you know, I ran a couple uh, 5Ks within six months and um, I just had a very positive attitude and I thought, oh, I just beat something that's 90% fatal. I'm invincible. Uh, where for my family and friends, you know, they had a different uh, different take on it. Well, I, I wish I would have had your courage and spirit to just get on the treadmill right after. <laughs> um, I think that's absolutely insane because I'm six months, almost a little bit close to six months after my cardiac arrest and I could not see myself just hopping on a treadmill running right after. I shouldn't say I was running right after. I was walking at a 0 0.7 and I had a cane. So you can picture me, picture me on the treadmill with my cane, you know, slow walking. And then eventually it got faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. So it took a while, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, that's just my personality is that I, you know, I, I was never scared or nervous or uh, maybe the first time I went running uh, on the streets uh, I was a little nervous and I went with my friend. Um, but other than that, you know, I just was full steam, full steam ahead. Wow. Well, I'm glad that you were able to kind of just bounce back and literally get on your feet <laughs> really quickly. Um, I know that you said that you're a very positive person, which by everything that you're telling me, it points right to it. Um, 
I know that depression is very common after events like this. I think it's about 86% of survivors get, I guess, like post-traumatic depression, if that's even a thing, but they do get depression afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, how is your coping experience like? But just kind of take us through that if you had a coping experience. Um, so I, I would not say that I suffered any depression at all from it that I remember. I mean, I, I do remember my doctor telling me heart patients cry for no reason. And so if you start crying for no reason, it's totally normal. And I'm glad he told me that because I only remember crying once and I had gone for a follow-up doctor's appointment and the woman who took my chest x-ray said, oh my gosh, you're so young and thin to have this happen to you. And something in that just set me off and I started crying. And so the doctor walks in and said, what's wrong? I'm like, I don't know. You told me I'd cry and I'm crying. Um, but um, yeah. And also I think for me, um, I'm a public person. I'm a personality on television. And so I had the luxury of everywhere I went, people stopping me to say something positive to me. Um, cards, emails, phone calls, social media, people reaching out to me. So I was bombarded every day with positivity uh, and people checking in on me and caring about me and asking me how I'm feeling. So I think that really um, uh, helped me out tremendously. Yeah, um, I think it was the same way for me. Um, my friends and family were also very supporting. Um, so after you've gone through all of this, um, what was kind of like a silver lining of your experience? Something that just re you really took out from it? Um, you know, I think uh, I always wanted to have a cause that meant something to me. And I did a lot of charity work before my cardiac arrest, but there was nothing really that spoke to me on a very personal level. Um, and I always thought, you know, I really need a cause. And then this happened and I thought, well, there's my cause, uh, women and heart health. There you go. Yeah. Well, like I said, I feel like we have a lot of common because I never really did a lot of charity work, which is bad, but now I feel like I have a little bit of a moral purpose because this happened to me, so I feel like I can yeah. put awareness. Um, so now that you've gone through all of this, I think we both came out a little bit more educated about SCA. What is something that you learned now that you didn't know about sudden cardiac arrest before? Well, I didn't know the difference between a heart attack and sudden cardiac arrest before this happened to me. I had no idea. So when I woke up, I thought I had a heart attack and then they had to explain to me the difference. It still took me a while. You know, I needed an electrician, not a plumber and, and that whole thing. Um, so, you know, that I, I learned, um, you know, a lot of the symptoms that I had. Um, I now tell women, you know, if you have this excessive clearing of your throat and coughing, it might be your heart and you should... Uh, after the age of 35, be talking to your doctor about your heart. Uh, I did not know it was our number one killer. Um, I did not know that sudden cardiac arrest is the number one killer. I didn't know any of these things. I didn't know that cardiac arrest was 90% fatal. I mean, there's so many things that you learn. Um, and I was able to get all of my friends certified in CPR. So that was a big plus. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things that, uh, that you learn after the fact. Nobody really pays attention to your heart because you can't see it. It's not like a wound on my head where I'm like, oh, I got to get that fixed, you know? So. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. Me as a 16 year old with predisposed heart conditions, I never even knew anything about this. Um, and I also did not know the difference. <laughs> um, so it was a big realization. Um, now that you are, I know you're very active on sudden cardiac arrest and bringing awareness to it, what are some of the things that you have done to just kind of, like I said, bring awareness? Um, so through uh, being on television and being a journalist, I have done a bunch of stories on cardiac arrest. I've done a bunch of stories on CPR. Um, 
I have uh, donated money to supply a CPR training kit to my son's um, high school. I um, pushed really hard in the state of Pennsylvania to make it mandatory um, that kids have to get CPR certified before that they can uh, graduate from high school and that passed. Um, and I talk to uh, groups as much as I can and share my story. Wow. I definitely do think that people do need to get CPR certified because my sister didn't know it and it's something that, I mean, it's just life saving for whatever occasion, whether it's in a cardiac arrest or anything else. Yeah. Now that you're a survivor of something very fatal, like you said, what would you say to someone that has just come out on the other side and is kind of struggling to know, like, something that we already know from having this experience and kind of going from it? I mean, I think everybody has their own story and has their own journey coming out of this. And it's okay to feel the way you feel. And it's okay to travel your own path. Um, I, in my case, my doctors have told me, you're not the norm. This is not how most people react after this. Um, you have a positivity and an outlook about living life to the fullest that a lot of people coming out of this don't have because they're very scared and nervous. Um, one of the best things that I did um, was I went to cardiac rehab where they got me back on the path of living my life uh, and walking and running without fear. And it was almost an after thought in one of my doctor's offices. They said, oh, do you want to go to cardiac rehab? And I said, well, what is that? I don't know what that is. And they said, you go and they hook you up to the machine and monitor you and you walk on the treadmill and you're going to be with other cardiac arrest survivors and other heart patients who were doing the same thing. And I said, well, of course I want to do that. And that was so helpful to go to that. And I went, I think it was two or three times a week. I would walk there, I'd get all hooked up, walk on the treadmill, and then I would just talk to all the other people who were there and ask questions. And there was another young guy there who had had cardiac arrest and had the same surgery, open heart surgery that I had. Um, and I just, I, I said, you know, does it hurt here? Does it hurt there? Because it hurts here, you know? And so I was able to ask him a lot of questions. And I think that's really important um, too. If you have questions, you have to find somebody who went through something similar and ask them. So you're not just sitting there wondering. Yeah, I think it's very hard to relate since there's such a small community of us. Um, so I know whenever a lot of survivors reached out to me, uh, there was in particular a guy that was my age. I think I asked him all the same questions like you were like, oh, does that hurt? Like, is it normal to feel this? Um, so I know that that definitely made me feel a lot better. Um, well, now that you've gone through all of this, and I know, like you said, you have such a positive outlook, um, is there anyone that you want to give special thanks to? I mean, I would give special thanks to those med students who uh, stopped and gave me CPR, which, by the way, I ended up going to their wedding. They got married, uh, went to their wedding, and then their first child was born on the same day as my first child. Um, so we say that we're totally connected. Um, and just, uh, you know, uh, thanks to everybody who was involved. You know, I, I was just the person who collapsed on the sidewalk, but it was all the other people that uh, did their part to give me CPR, call 911, the firefighters who arrived with an AED, rushing me to the hospital where uh, amazing doctors and nurses who put me in that uh, cooling therapy uh, to save my organs and save my brain. I mean, it just was a perfect scenario. Yeah, well, I'm glad that you're here joining us. I'm glad that you could do this in the first place. I know that it was a little odd for you to just kind of reach out and kind of hope. <laughs> no, to, honestly, people, people contacted me all the time and from all over the country all the time. So um, just because my story was so public. So when they start Googling sudden cardiac arrest, I'm usually the first person, first story that pops up. Um, so yeah, so people reach out all the time. Yeah, no, I was very stoked to 
even get a reply from you in the first place. So thank you so much for doing this.